2017. This particular competition, you might also call it the fastest competition you'll ever see in your adult lives. This will not take uh, too much of your time and you'll be back in beach clothes very, uh, very shortly. This is our 90 second competition. And after the 10 minute competition, I tend to talk for a while and blab on as two teams who are here for the 10 minute no. Today, we're, I'm not gonna give you too much feedback. We're gonna get you, uh, uh, get you done and so you can enjoy the rest of your, the rest of your time here. <coughs> but permit me, I need to read you statement as in all the other competitions we read everybody the same statement even though you've probably seen it on our website before <clears throat> imagine that you are an employee of the company whose case you've been studying you're at a meeting in which people are discussing the issue however no one has brought up ethics there's a pause in the conversation you have 90 seconds in which to convince the other people at the meeting that there are ethical issues that need to be addressed you don't have to argue for a solution, you just need them to see that there are serious ethical issues here. One member of the team will do this. My name is Jim Arnold. I am a professor at University of St. Thomas in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I have been on the board of IBEC for about seven years now. And I'm glad to get good feedback from everybody. Uh, things seem to be going well, and uh, I will always report that back to the board. And we're Thrilled that we had so many so many teams here this year, and it seems like it's a really, really, really smart group. So I've heard from other judges that a lot of things are very close in the decision-making process. Lots of very good cases. Any questions before we get going? Otherwise, LMU is up. All right. Good afternoon. Uh, you have 90 seconds, and when the uh, buzzer goes off, that's it, my friend. Here we go. People of the board, my fellow employees, the Dakota Access Pipeline must be diverted to the originally proposed route. As we say in our mission statement, a company is only as good as its people. And we, as employees, have the power to uphold the values of energy transfer partners. Values like a commitment not only to business partners and customers, but also to the environment and to communities in which we do business. We have the power to mitigate the risk of hurting the environment and hurting the Standing Rock Sioux community, a group of people who have been marginalized and mistreated for generations, leading to a loss of sovereignty, a loss of their identity, and a loss of culture. We have the power to hear these communities and serve as an example of a company that operates under conscious capitalism. We have the power to make Energy Transfer Partners a place where we're all proud to work, a place that values communities all over America, from the top down to its most marginalized. We have the power to change the course of history by changing the course of the Dakota Access Pipeline. Thank you. Thank you very much. ASU. And welcome to you and begin. Good afternoon, my dear colleagues of Alibaba. We're here, I'm here to present a notion that has been brought to my attention recently. What happened is in a specific product of the CISAM credit, we have some serious ethical and social aspects we need to address. What's happening now? We have three, three aspects we need to consider. The first one is we're interfering with the personal data and information of the citizens, our stakeholders. The second aspect, we're somehow interfering with social interactions and how that is being transmitted to the financial system. And the third of all is the proper usage of it. What I'm here to explain to you is like, I want to take four, five minutes, of, five seconds of your time. Think about it. How would you feel about it when people are interfering with your data, your privacy, when there are no regulations or laws that can protect you? In this case, we want to grow as a company. We want to expand. The Chinese market is saturated in this space. But now, at what cost? On one hand, we're going to have access to capital. But on the other hand, we're interfering with people and personal data and human rights. So my question to you is, how, what should we do? We want to be part of the solution of the problem. 
we want to keep doing business and we want to leave what we preach. We as a company want to expand and of course want to be sure that we generate that positive impact in the future. We're in the must of improve and sustain the Chinese financial system, but we also want to collaborate that in the, in the good practices, in, the, in a good manner. Uh, we're all here to intend and to let you know that issue and thank you for being here today. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Hong Kong. I'm Prasad from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Welcome to you, and begin. What can you find from a user's individual data? His financial records? His ability to pay his bills by the month end? By looking at his clicking patterns, you can actually find out what an individual can do before he even thinks about it. Individual personal data is very critical. It's an asset, which an individual probably would not share even with his family and friends. His data includes his aspirations, his preferences, his choices, his hopes, his fears. And at Google, we are perceived to be selling it to the third party. Don't you think it's an ethical issue where critical personal data is shared just because a user is not aware about it? Google needs to change this. It needs to empower its users to make their own choices. Remember, the users are the users are difficult to find and easy to go. Thank you. in relation to privacy versus the public safety. Although we think that we have succeeded, think about the potential future downfalls. Imagine if on September 10th, 2001, Apple had created backdoor access and been able to potentially stop the 9-11 attacks from occurring. How would the future have been impacted? We got lucky that nothing was on this iPhone, but what if? Was the conclusion in this case that the danger to the lives of American people was not as severe as the dangers to the privacy of your customers? Think about it. We are the most profitable and influential company in the world, and everything that we do will have an impact on the world and will have a lasting impression. Although this case may have been made out to be about privacy versus public safety, I personally believe that it's all about implementing both at the same time. We must ask each other, what kind of company do we want to be looking forward? And what constitutes something as being important enough to look into? We have a powerful mission statement, but we must transcend that mission, transcend our goals, and set the precedent in a world filled with technological encryption to show that we truly do value our customers' need for privacy, along with the growing need for public safety worldwide. Thank you. Getting it right down to the last thing. <laughs> <thing. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being That was great. What I, what I heard from you are really great parts of business ethics. LMU, we talked about the uh, commitment to various parties, and um, uh, including hurting the environment, but also the piece of uh, conscious capitalism and communities. I like that a lot. That was uh, that brought in some really good multiple pieces, which is what business ethics is all about. Yeah. ASU, we were talking about interference with personal data, social inter interactions, uh, and, and these things being seen as positive, but at what cost? And that is the ethical question at the end. At what cost to the different parties? Very good. Hong Kong. Um, clicking info is an asset. I like that. That was, that was great, and, and it definitely is. 
But you also bring in the piece of empowering our users, which we don't necessarily hear that enough, the empowering piece. We hear protect our, our users, empowering our users. That's unique. I like that a lot, definitely. And LaSalle, finally, Apple versus FBI. We're talking about privacy versus safety and transcending our mission. What I like what you said was, and this is, this is big in ethics, rather than saying either or, you can say both. And that's, that's important. If you, look at, if you look at ethics as an either or situation rather than an and both situation, you're going to get yourself into trouble. Trying to satisfy both at the end is the way to go. All these were very, very good. You're not making my life easy. So uh, thank you very much. Anybody have any questions before we uh, conclude our 10 minutes together? <laughs> OK, get, uh, sir. I wanted the, uh, the CDs for today. Uh, is it six or seven? Six. Six out here. Yes. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you very much.